So now that we have all of our assets, the, the static assets, the photos and the, and the images, the graphics, um, obviously uh, in any modern website, we want video. So for that, I'd like to invite up Jason Levine. Hey, Long David. Stage. Hey, Good Jason. <laughs> So first, before we get started, uh, congratulations to Jason. Jason uh, and team just got back from NAB. Uh, if you're not aware of what NAB is, it's the largest broadcast video show that we have in the US. Um, and the video products won six Best of Show yes. awards, uh, which was fantastic. And for uh, all you Premier fans, uh, Premier officially took the number one spot, both in terms of market share and in terms of perception. Yes. So obviously hard Long at work. Long time coming. We made it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Been working really hard at that yes. one. So why is it number one? What's going on with the video tools? Right. OK. So David, we're going to take a look at some After Effects stuff to start here. And if you take a look at this video, again, we're trying to bring this into this Wild Isles theme. You can see that we've got these people in a field. We've got an SUV. And David mentioned that he wanted me to make this video look a bit more rugged. And I thought, what better way to do that, perhaps, than to add something like a grill guard to the front of this SUV. And to do that, I would probably implement something like a 3D object. Well, now it is my absolute pleasure to tell you that when you download After Effects CC from the Creative Cloud, it comes bundled with Maxon Cinema 4D Lite, a 3D modeling application you can, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You can build your own models, you can download models, you can even work with models that you've worked with in Photoshop and bring them into Maxon. And now you have what is called a direct live 3D pipeline right into After Effects CC. So I'm going to show you some of that now. Take a look. Now, before we do that, the first thing we need to do when we're working with After Effects in a 3D application is establish tracking points. The 3D app needs to understand things like perspective and the ground and the objects that are parented on the ground. So to do that, we're going to start by using our enhanced 3D camera tracker. And when I do that, you'll see that it's going to place a series of 3D tracking points over top of my 2D footage here. And one of the new things that we have is that now I can come along the ground, and I can select the points along the ground, and I can do what's called create a ground or origin plane. And this is automatically going to tell Maxon Cinema 4D Lite where the ground is so that it understands the ground and all the things that are actually sitting on the ground. Now, moving forward a couple of frames, I'll come over to the front of the grill, and now I can actually select these points here, and I can right-click, and I can choose Create Solid and Camera. And now you can see we have this beautifully tracked solid along the front of the grill, and this is effectively where we will parent that 3D object. So at this point now, this is where we're going to start to see that live 3D pipeline. Because right from within After Effects CC, I can export that tracking data directly to Maxon, and then from within After Effects CC, I can launch Maxon Cinema 4D right here. And when I do that, and I bring in that tracking data, now you can actually see that we have our ground plane established and our solid. So at this point, all I actually need to do is bring in that 3D model and parent the two together. So I'm going to come up to my file menu here. I'll choose Merge. We'll grab my grill guard, click on Open. And then I'm just going to reorient some of my layers here so I can reposition this and kind of bring this in a little bit closer. So I'll go over to my coordinates here. And let's go ahead and zero these out. Again, sort of positioning that grill guard a bit closer to our solid, just like that. A couple of clicks. And now you can see we have the 3D object parented to that tracked solid. So now when I would go back to After Effects and I'd import that object, here's what we have. <laughs> it looks mostly good. Mostly good. <laughs> And unfortunately, it looks like uh, they got in an accident and they're scared and lost. So uh, perhaps. Well, perhaps David, we could, you wanted it rugged. Could, not uh, that rugged. So if we could de rug it a little bit, that would be great. <laughs> well, this actually brings up a good point because the traditional workflow between the 3D application and After Effects, you were doing things somewhat blindly. In other words, you would be doing your 3D work, you would render, which was very long, very intensive, and then you would bring that file, you'd import it into After Effects, and then you'd place it inside the composition, and you would look at it, and you'd go, oh, mistake, and then you'd go back to the 3D app, and then you'd make that change, and then you would re-render, and then you would re-import, and then you would re-insert, and then you would watch it again, and, oh. I'm guessing there must be a better way. <laughs> There's a better way. <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> Calm. 
So now, right from the After Effects composition panel, you can see that we have the Cinema 4D object. And using the standard Adobe Edit Original, I can choose this. It launches us into C4D, where you can now see that I have the video composited behind it. I can choose my rotation tool. I can make my adjustments so that we look a little less rugged, a little more together here. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and save it. And now, when I click back to After Effects, wait for it. <laughs> The change is applied. Thank you very much. Oh, and David, you were just working on that map with Terry, and I yes. thought, why not, why not use that map here, right? We're trying to represent the Wild Isles. So I took the Illustrator file from Terry, and using our tracking points, parented that to the hood of the car. So now if I go ahead and solo this, and we go full screen, and we play this back, now we've got our grill guard in 3D tracked on our 2D object with our map, and all is well in the world. That looks great. Yeah? So yeah! <laughs> Huge amount of productivity there. But one more request. This is yes. supposed to be an adventure on an island, and the mountains are distracting me. Let's go ahead and open up the sky. Okay. And make it look more like we're close to a beach. Well, and you know, this actually brings up another great point, and another one of these great functions in After Effects, which is the, the idea of a concept of background or sky replacement. You see this all the time in films and movies, right, where they shoot on location, and the sky wasn't as blue as they wanted. So this is a really common process. And to do that, you would typically implement something known as rotoscoping. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into my, uh, open up my layer here. Now, a couple of years ago, we introduced the Roto Brush in After Effects. And that was just an amazing tool because it really sped up the process of literally uh, separating foreground images from the background. So I've gone ahead and done that for you. And when you take a look at this original Roto Brush pass, if I go into my matte view, you can see that it gets us, well, pretty close. But the problem is that all of those individual twigs, the branches, what really makes this look natural if we're going to composite something behind it, they're missing. Now again, this is a good start, but we'd have to do a lot of work to really preserve that background to make it look natural. So we thought to ourselves, selves, why not leverage a technology that we have in another CC application like Photoshop? Leveraging a technology known as Refine Edge and bring it into After Effects. <laughs> this is with one cup of coffee. coffee. <laughs> this is why I'm also keeping a little a bit little more bit distance than I kept with Terry. So my friends, I'm so pleased to introduce to you today that now inside After Effects CC, we have the Refine Edge tool, where now, just like in Photoshop, I can come along the edge of my tree line here, and I can trace along the tree line, being careful to preserve all of those little twigs, all those little branches, and also include some of the background so that it understands what to keep and what to eliminate, just like this as I trace along with my brush. And wh while he's doing that, this is very much the same technology we have in Photoshop, but with one key difference. Unlike in Photoshop that applies it to one image, this will actually track frame to frame, track the, 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 the differences, and actually adjust what it will what It's it going to propagate out. all the frames for you, and it's going to take something that was very hard Let's go into our matte view and give you this beautiful, soft, yes. Oh. And if we go ahead, here, wait, hold on. Now, here's the before. Here's the after. And David, as per your request, <laughs> tree line. And now, if we go ahead, let's go ahead and solo this here. Once again, full screen and tree line preserved, blue sky 3D, After Effects CC, Refine Edge. We did it! <laughs> I don't know how that yeah. Well, it's good, and I'm okay. impressed. I'm impressed. Thank you. But, but <laughs> I would put wispy twigs and branches at the nearly impossible end of the spectrum. The impossible thing is hair. And, you know, I've been noticing that you have really beautiful hair. So, well, <laughs> thank so, you for noticing. Okay, a little bit more distance. Oh, thank you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sure, that's good. Um, so, I, I know you love, Jason loves to perform, and he has beautiful hair. What can we, what can After Effects do for you? <laughs> We're going somewhere with this. That right? was that <laughs> scripted. Wasn't quite the setup we had planned. So, interesting you should mention that, David. Well, I called upon my friends Vashi, Mike, and Eric, and we did a shoot one day, and we wanted to really put not only this technology, but some other Refine Edge, technology in in uh, refine edge technologies in After Effects to the test. So um, rather than just shoot on green screen or blue screen, which is pretty easy to remove and preserve all those wispy bits of hair, we tried something like, well, what about blue sky? People try and key against blue sky. Well, we didn't have blue sky on that day, but we had um, basically a very pale blue wall. So yes, I, oh, and thank you for the shirt, David. It, yes, it you're great. welcome. Thank you. 
I've got the one too. The buttons were a little low. Come to sneaks, we've got a number of players. <laughs> so they filmed me against this sort of blue sky wall. And when we used traditional keying techniques, like the amazing key light, effectively you ended up with this very hard looking, you know, again, the, the, the strands of hair aren't preserved, what's left of it at least. So we decided how about use a new effect in After Effects known as Refine Soft Matte. And literally I was able to take this, drag and drop it, turn it on, oh, and suddenly the strands of hair were preserved. But you know, David, it wasn't enough just to film myself on this blue backdrop. Never. It wasn't enough just to get dressed up in my best 70s clothes. I didn't want to just tell you guys about it. I wanted to sing about it. Of course. <laughs> so, this is a work in progress, but here for you today, my friends, I present to you the creative clown. Friends, I am not only an Adobe employee, I'm a Creative Cloud member. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jason. Ladies and gentlemen, the never boring Jason Levine. <laughs>